What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel. If you've been here before, shout out to you. Thank you for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, please get down there, hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. So you guys know that I bought this TIG welder not that long ago. And now I went out and bought a brand new MIG welder. So I was missing one thing and I finally got it. I've seen a bunch of people talk very highly of Amazon plasma cutters. So I was like, why not give it a shot? So like everyone else, I bought the cheapest plasma cutter I could find on Amazon. And I know that's what everyone says. And maybe others have done that, but I didn't buy the cheapest. I bought the cheapest out of the highest rating plasma cutter so I didn't want to just buy something cheap I wanted to buy something good and cheap so I did the sort by highest rating and then I went and just sorted it by price so I found one that had like over 700 reviews and it was like four and a half stars out of five so that's you know really freaking good it came in like about a week so let's go ahead and well I already unboxed it but let's go ahead and open up everything in the box i only unboxed it. so let's go ahead and open up everything in the box and assemble everything and see how it goes so what we got here is this 50 amp unit and although it's very small in size this thing takes 220 so it's pretty beefy and it comes with a 110 adapter cord so obviously here in the garage i only have 110 so that's why i have it on right now but i can always take it outside where i have 220 and crank up the juice on it so it brings that it brings some consumables right here so it brings an air hose some fittings a ground cable and this thing is actually pretty short um it's probably about i don't know like three four feet so it's actually very short. I don't know if I like that. And it brings, obviously, the torch. So what I like about this torch is it doesn't have like the trigger like all the other ones that you see on Amazon have. It actually has this like button. It's kind of like, like the TIG buttons that people use sometimes where like you hold the torch like this and then just, you know. So I kind of like that. It's a little different. Right here we have something else in there that I can't get now it comes out the bottom so we got I think it's the bracket that holds this and then in here we got a gauge okay so I guess I have to assemble this and then put it on right back here so I think this holds the regulator right there and then I'm pretty sure we use this line and these fittings and go from the regulator slash water trap down to here I think all in all it looks like it brings everything the only thing I don't see that I feel like usually everything brings nowadays is Teflon tape for the threads but I should have some somewhere here in the garage, so I'm not really worried about that. But I do want to get all of this assembled and on the plasma cutter so we can test it out. Like I said, the only issue I have so far without turning it on, without doing anything, just unboxing, is that the ground cable right here is extremely short. So I don't know. I think I might. I'm already thinking about doing some modifications like well, not modifications, but making it better, like getting a longer ground cable. And I don't know how good this clamp is, so maybe upgrading the clamp as well. Um, other than that, maybe the fittings on the regulator, maybe making them swivel fittings. And I know that they sell some really cool, uh, what are these called? Like drag tips or whatever. This one doesn't have that much of a lip. Let me see if you guys can see it better. So it doesn't have that much of a lip. So I'm thinking about maybe getting some better ones, but you know, these should do for the test. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all assembled and then we should be ready to test it out.
All right guys, so here is the final fully assembled product. So I got all three things hooked up. I have the ground clamp, which I still don't like how short it is. I have the torch, so the torch has two connections. I got those hooked up right there. And then we flip it around. Obviously we have our adapter cable right there. And then back here we have our water trap slash regulator. I got this hooked up. I got the worm clamps on. I got everything Teflon taped up on this side. It brought another straight barb for this side. And I thought about just putting this on there, which is a swivel hose connector. But I remember that I have this one. So this one is much better because I can get to it like this, get to it like that, bring it down here. Like it's gonna be able to move all over the place like I want it to and I have the swivel connector on it. So it's literally gonna be like super flexible, which I want. I don't wanna stress the back plate of this any more than I have to. So that's why I got this. Really happy about this. Hopefully it all works out. And speaking of working out, let's go ahead, connect this bad boy, fire it up, and test it out. So to test this out, I'm gonna use three different types of metals that I have here with me. So I have eighth inch uh, aluminum, I have eighth inch steel and then I have quarter inch steel. I'm gonna pull these out of here. And we can get testing. So without ever plugging it in, let's go ahead and plug it in for the first time. Plug it straight into the wall here. All right, so let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. Right, let's see. We're gonna leave it right at around 30 amps. Let's see. Oh. So 30. See the knob right there says 30, but it's reading 32-ish. 33, 32, around there. Should be fine. We're gonna go ahead and ground. I guess we're gonna start with the aluminum since it's a softer metal. This ground cable being this short is not the move. I actually went on the listing right now and I saw a lot of people and the seller saying that it comes with two meters of ground clamp or cable, but looks like I only got one. So if it was twice as long, it'd be perfect. So I'm gonna email them and see what happens. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out with this. I have it hooked up right now. I just haven't hooked up the air, so let's go ahead and do that. See if we get any leaks. Hopefully not. Hard to do with one hand. There we go. So we got it hooked up. And it's reading. I'm not reading any pressure. So I think we do have a leak, I just have to figure out where, but I'm going to crank it up to 75 and then figure it out. So I found the leak and it was coming from this fitting right here, but I took the nut off thinking the whole thing was going to pull out, but this literally gets held on with this nut, but it moves around inside like a lot. So I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and throw this nut on and hope that it fixes the issue. If it doesn't, then I think I might have to take the whole, well, I don't even know if I can take this whole backside off, but it's definitely coming from here. But like, as you can see, this thing is super loose in there. I don't know what the issue is, but I don't think it's supposed to do that. All right, guys, so as you can see, 75 PSI, well, closer to 80 something. Let's go down a little. Right there. Okay, so around 75, no more air leak from down here. So we fixed the issue. So if you guys get this machine, make sure that you put Teflon tape on every single air fitting, including this one down here. And I say including this one because that one does not come in the little baggie that's basically built into the machine. So just take that nut off, put some Teflon tape there, put it back in. And once you have it on everything, as you can see, 75 PSI, no leaks whatsoever. So now we are officially ready to go ahead and test this thing. The 
the aluminum not as smooth as I thought. I think I'm doing something wrong. I just checked the air pressure and it went down to below 60. So I don't know if maybe that's the issue or what, but I have the eighth inch steel here. I cranked it up to about 90 PSI this time. Let's see if we get better luck. You guys know that I always keep it 100 with you guys and I had everything completely wrong. I was cranking up the amps, cranking up the air pressure. I went online right now because it didn't work as you guys saw and I figured out that I had my amps way too high for the 110 that I'm using and I had the air pressure way too high as well. So right now I have it at 27 amps and around 30 PSI of air pressure. So let's go ahead and see if this works out a lot better or if our plasma cutter is wrong, which I don't think it is. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Just as I suspected, that was my issue. Now I am making complete cuts. The problem with this setup is that it doesn't bring a manual or even a, like a chart that tells you how many amps and uh, PSI of pressure to run. So it's kind of like a guessing game unless you go online, but now you guys know, go online. I also found a chart online that I'll post on the screen right now so that if you guys are getting this exact kit, you guys know exactly what amperage and pressure to use. So as you can see, we have the steel right here. We got another one right here. It looks kind of blotchy, but like I said, this is my first time. And I've heard that this all comes off really super easily. This is the aluminum and I guess I only did one of the aluminum, but it comes off pretty easy. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and get the quarter inch steel now. So this is gonna be the ultimate test. The only problem is it is super rusty. So let me fix that real quick. This is a much nicer surface to work on. So got this ready. We're gonna clamp it down and we're gonna ground it. And I guess this will be the ultimate test because I'm pretty sure this is as thick as it'll go. It might go like a hair thicker on 110, but other than that, you're gonna have to use 220. So we're gonna use, we're using 110 right now. So we're just gonna go up to this. And if it passes the test, then we know we got a good unit. So I made two cuts on the quarter inch steel because I did the first cut and then I realized I didn't record it. So I had to press record and cut another one. So look at the progression on just two cuts. This was the first one. As you can see, it's all blotchy and still pretty hot. And then my second one, my second one came out so freaking nice and clean. Look at that. It's not perfect. I don't even know which side it was that I cut, honestly but it's not perfect but it is really good as you can see on the bar right here all of this can be basically hammered off and then it'll be nice and straight so all in all i think this is a pretty freaking solid machine i know that it's going to make cutting a lot faster easier and cheaper cutting is very i guess you can say expensive because everything you use to cut like sawzalls and band saws and chop saws they all use either a blade or a disc so it's 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 expensive um this machine here like i said it basically costs less than like a milwaukee fuel m18 grinder so 
I'm happy that this is cheaper to begin with and then also cheaper because the consumables are pretty cheap. And if you don't get water in your system, then the consumables will last a good while. So if you guys wanna get a plasma cutter, I 10 out of 10 recommend it. This one in particular, I'm happy with it. Like I said, in the beginning, I was kinda like, uh, because I was just you know using too much of it for not enough power that we're using and not enough thickness of the metal that we're cutting. So once you get the amperage and the air pressure dialed in, then this thing cuts like butter. So I'm pretty happy. The only thing is I need to find maybe some like goggles maybe because using a welding helmet is like, it gets too dark to the point where I can't see what I'm doing. So without using my uh, square right here, I am never gonna be able to cut a straight line. I mean, I don't think you can anyways, whether you're seeing or not, but the welding helmet just makes it worse. So I'm gonna have to see what I can use. I've seen people saying that they use goggles and it works. So I'm gonna try it out. It's not that bright, especially only using 30 amps. It's not that bright at all, really. So I don't know, I'm gonna look into it, but the machine itself, it's a solid unit. Like I said, guys, if you guys wanna pick this exact one up since you guys saw this video and you know exactly how to work it, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you guys can order it yourself. Like I said, I got it from Amazon. Only took about a week to get here. But yeah, link is gonna be down there if you guys wanna grab one. But that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did and I'm pretty stoked to have a plasma cutter that cuts quarter inch steel on 110. I've heard that it cuts a little, like a hair thicker than half inch on 220. So I don't have metal that thick. I don't think I'll ever be working with metal that thick. So I think maybe if I plug it into 220 though and try cutting this, it'll cut even easier, I'm guessing. I don't know, but I'm pretty excited. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the future uploads. But that's gonna do it for this one. So as always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.